While a single drop of blood might be small, if you carefully observe it, it can tell you potentially a lot of information. So let's go into refining your eye as far as looking at blood droplet observations. So there's different stages of blood impact. So we have the stage one, where the contact and collapse phase, we have the displacement phase, dispersion, and retraction phase. So this kind of has that blood droplets coming into contact with the surface, and how it comes in contact with that surface can provide some information to investigators. So the first one being like the shape. What's the shape of the blood drop? Is it round or is it oval shaped? The shape of the blood stain resulting from a single drop of blood falling at 30 inches into a smooth cardboard surface. So it's the same drop, it's the same distance. What does change is here it's re indicating it's coming at a 90 degree angle to that. It's coming straight down and hitting it this way. Here at a 10 degree. So you have a much different angle of impact. So while you still have the same distance and the same amount of blood, the angle of impact really does change dramatically the shape of the blood drop. We also have the margin. So when we're looking at a specific blood drop, this might be a little cartoon-like image, but looking at the spikes, which are attached to the main droplet, these would be the spike regions here. Then we also have the satellites. Those are not attached to the droplet, and those are located over here. So this might be something you might be looking at, is the um, degree of spikes and amount of uh, satellites that might be present in a blood sample can help tell potentially how high or how close that um, droplet may have fallen. Also, the surface that it impacts can play a great role on what is seen. If it's a flat surface, the edge of the blood drop appears to be smooth and circular, and that could be like on a glass or a marble, kind of smooth, hard surface, or it could be a porous surface where the edge of the drop of the blood may form small spikes or extensions or include more satellites. That's because of the fibrous material that might be on the cardboard here, where we kind of see it could be in paper or cloth material. The diameter of the blood drop. So when a drop of blood strikes a horizontal surface at 90 degrees, it produces a circular stain. The surface texture is smooth, such as glass or polished tile. The surface tension will hold the droplet in that kind of circular pattern. So essentially, the surface influences the flow or the movement of that droplet. Surface tension ensures that the droplet collapses uniformly. However, the smooth surface means that the rim outflow is also uniform. Uh, so it's important that many factors do come into play. There's the drying time. We kind of see a time lapse uh, here of uh, drying where we're generally having this ring form around the wet blood droplet or skeletization within 50 seconds of hitting the target surface. However, complete drying time for a droplet depends on the nature of the target surface and the environment surrounding the stain, as some droplets can take as long as 20 minutes to completely dry. The outer ring remains in place even if the rest of the stain is wiped away. So you kind of can help determine if you're right for it soon on scene, um, whether the blood was dry or not, that can potentially pinpoint or try to determine the time at which that blood first came impact with that surface or area. We also have clotting time. So clotting events can also give an indication of the time elapsed between bloodshed and discovery of the stain. Consider three phases of clotting. The initiation is 10 seconds to one and a half minutes after the bloodshed. Formation is five to 20 minutes after the bloodshed and reaction is 30 minutes to an hour and a half after the blood is initially shed. Reaction time is affected primarily by the target surface and ambient temperature. It's also impacted by humidity and air movement as well. So important to have an idea of what the environment is that the blood was found. We kind of see that coagulation um, and clotting, if you will, step here on a clear surface uh, that does occur. And again, this can help you determine the time. Uh, this gives you just kind of that indication of how it does visually change uh, and how when you find it, it's important to take pictures at that time because it can help give you an idea of the duration of time since it was first entered into this, the area. Uh, lastly here, we have a time series of drying process of blood with a little nice little comparison here when we're looking at um, uh, different surfaces and times. So all droplets were in their uh, final configuration after two hour time, um, time, as we see it here at the end. Note that the line visible in the half clean fingerprint binary coating is on the opposite side of the glass side and used to identify the edge of the coating. So we kind of see that here and here, kind of determine where that you know perimeter 
um, is. The scale bar is here, and that's five millimeters, and applies to all images to give you an idea of the size of the blood droplet. But this, you can clearly see how clean glass, fingerprint coated glass, half clean, half fingerprint coated glass, where you see that division in that line, oil coated glass, um, and this super hydrophobic coated glass flat can really impact um, the end result of the blood. So this is where taking pictures as soon as you find it and also identifying what surface that blood came in contact with can help try to approximate the time that blood may have uh, been present there to try to uh, determine the time at which uh, a crime may have occurred.